Hey everybody, we are live here from Incarnate University. Today we're doing a master class session. We're going to be creating some side view buildings. If you're not certain what I mean by side view buildings, you'll kind of see them right here on the screen right here. I'm going to let people kind of filter in real quick. Last time we had a bit of a connection issue. And so I want to make sure that things are working. Now, if you do like this map, you'll find that link to that in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll find that in the video description. So this is what we're going to be working on here. We're going to be focusing on exteriors only. Uh, we can maybe set up interiors for a different stream. Uh, please give me a shout in the chat if the connection and the sound is working properly. Again, we're making side view buildings right here with some other ones as well that I've made. I just want to give you an example of what we're going to be working on. Something like this tavern in this inn, this potion shop, uh, things like these windmills. These are the kind of things that we're going to be focusing on today. We're going to be doing making these kind of things with the fantasy uh, battle map style. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the point of making these kind of things, right? As a DM or a GM, if you're running a campaign, it doesn't really make any sense to kind of make these unless they're gonna serve some kind of function. They don't really work as a battle map or anything like that. So the functionality really for me is I use them as a guide to make a lot of my battle maps. A lot of people you know, who make battle maps might struggle with, well, how do I come up with a design for the building that I want to create as a battle map? And so you can kind of create your own side view buildings like this apothecary and then use it as a guide to then use that as a kind of like a guide for making the battle map part. And so one thing I've noticed with battle maps is they don't have a sense of verticality or depth to them because they're orthographic and just a pure bird's eye view straight down. And so this side view uh, architecture, this little building right here that you see, this apothecary, gives it a sense of verticality and depth. And so that's why I kind of like to make these kind of things. I have a couple other ones as well. There's this tower house right here. And you can see that I use it as a guide to make the battle map and the different floors. You'll notice that I did the same thing for making this gothic horror uh, clock tower. So using these is really, really helpful to kind of make your uh, battle maps. At least that's what I use them for. Maybe when we go into um, part two of this, when we go into interiors, we'll kind of cover the other functionality that these might have because you can make interiors for these, but they're not really functional as a battle map. They might be more useful as like maybe some kind of one shot or exploration. And I have done that in the past where I'll make ex interiors for these kind of things and my players will have a chance to kind of explore and look around. And then sometimes I'll make corresponding battle maps uh, in the orthographic top-down view that go with each room, as well as the interior parts of the side view building. So really, it's up to you and how much time that you have and how much you're willing to put into it. So that's really what I kind of do. So let's just go jump right into it. I'm just going to create a new map. I'm going to choose Fantasy Battle Maps. We're going to go with 4K and just your regular landscape. Hey, everyone in the chat, by the way. The Wanderers Haven... New Pyrrhix, welcome. Glad that you guys are all here. So excited about this. So the first thing I'll do is I want to choose like a color from my background because one thing is, is that when you have a texture like this on your background, it kind of is distracting with all the elements and all of the um, effects and the little elements that are on it. And so what I'll end up doing is just changing it to a flat color and that will make it a lot easier for me to to look at things. The next thing to do is I'll probably usually turn on the grid. The grid is really helpful for snapping to when I'm putting together the different type of structures and I'll bring down the opacity like quite a bit so it's not too distracting. Like when it's this high, all the way up at one or 100%, it's just kind of distracting. But when I bring the opacity down, I have this nice grid to work with. And so that works very nice there. And the next thing that I'll do is I'll want to decide some important things about the architecture. Like one of the very first things that I'll think about is, is shapes. And the most important thing is, this, remember, there are some three basic shapes that we'll be focusing on when we're working on our architecture. And that is squares and rectangles, circles and triangles. These three shapes are going to be really, really important when we're putting together our shapes for our our buildings, right? Like you're going to be using rectangles and squares a lot for making the floors. You're going to be using uh, triangles or some kind of polygon for making your roof shapes. 
all of these things are going to be really, really helpful. So understanding basic shapes and basic geometry is going to be really, really helpful here. Hey, first time chatters, both of you, really glad that you're here and I'm really glad that you're enjoying Incarnate. That's wonderful to hear. So now that we have the three basic shapes down, now the next step is how do we start putting together the things? And one of the first things is, and, then, and I apply this method to every single map that I make, a battle map, a world map, or whatever, you start from the ground up, right? You wouldn't start by making the roof first and then the second floor. You would start by making the ground and then building your way up. If you don't want to show the ground, then you want to start with the foundations, the ground floor, the first floor, second floor, and so on, right? So whenever you're building anything in Incarnate, and really any tool, is to start building from the ground up. So that's rule one. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to make is probably a foundation. Now, most foundations for modern buildings are below the ground, so you can't see the foundation. But with a lot of buildings in the medieval ages and what is based a lot of fantasy is based off of, the foundation is actually on the outside. In other words, it's not dug under the ground. It's on top of the ground, and so the building sets on top of it. So the first thing we'll have to do is build some kind of foundation. And what I use for foundations are stone. Right now, the line and shape tools are going to be super important when making these side view buildings. So I'm going to pick some kind of wall that I want to act as the foundation. And maybe I should use like a really thick one. I think the temple has some really nice stuff for that. So I'll go and click that. You'll see there's this nice white marble wall right here. This will work just fine. This will be perfect. So what I'll do is I'll click the line tool and I want to make sure I snap to grid. And then I'm just going to go ahead across like this and build it. So there's that first step right there is that. Now I'm going to turn off the caps because they're not useful to me quite yet and no shadows. So for now, I'll turn that off. This is kind of a lighter um, brick. And so when you're making your other floors and your other materials, think about contrast. So if you're going to have the stone be dark, then whatever textures or... Uh, stamps you're going to use, make sure that they're dark to contrast against the darker stone or the, the lighter to go against the darker stone. So contrast is important. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this real quick. I'm going to change the saturation to make it just kind of a grayish color. And then I'll bring the opacity down or the brightness down. Again, I'm going to go with a darker stone and then I'll have the other colors that are going to be used on this building be a little bit uh, brighter. I also noticed that there's no line work on the edges so you can uh, add little caps i do believe in here there are little caps that you can add on here let me check to see here are there caps i think so let me double check i'm not seeing those caps but it's okay if you don't use if you don't have them but let's start there and we're going to start with the next step which is adding in the first floor we'll add in doors windows and all that stuff first start with foundation now start with the next floor up i'm going to use a kind of architecture called tudor and tudor is a specific type of architecture that uses wooden timber frames to make certain frame designs and then they fill that in with something called daub which is generally uh, some kind of dirt mix with with hay or whatever it might be and that daub would fill in the wooden framework so we're going to be building that for our first step all right, so let's go ahead and go back to the line tool. We're going to choose a stamp to act as the frame. And I'm going to use wood for that because Tudor buildings generally use wood for the half timber frames. So I'm just going to type in wood so that I have it. There it is. Perfect. You can use this one right here. This wooden one works fine. Or you can also use, I think there's a couple other ones you could use. There's this one right here from Fay. It's up to you. You can use these from ships. You can use this. From wood wall there's also this tavern one but you know i think i'm going to use the one we had up here at first so i think i'm going to use that i'm going to undo that my mistake i had that selected so i'll go ahead and select this and what i'll do first is i'm going to put down to make the walls now you can use the line tool or you can use the uh you could also use the shape tool to make this it's up to you now we might want to decide to use the grid to represent a certain amount of feet right so maybe this foundation right here is just over five feet why don't we have the first floor and we want to have maybe hmm, how much room do we want to have right here about 5 10 15 20 that's too big we might want to go with maybe about 10 to 11 feet might work better so let's go right about here 
or throw that down. I'm going to push this down like this so that that's beneath that. I'm going to turn shadows off for now. We'll play with shadows later. And if you don't like the way that there's this little L shape in the corners right here, if you go over to advanced stroke options and go to caps, just go nodes and then the caps will show up on the nodes and that will hide that weird kind of L shape that you see there. So that's kind of helpful, right? After you've done that, you might want to use a fill, right? Now there are a couple options. If you want to paint the texture that you want the first floor wall to be, then you use a clipping mask. If you don't mind just using uh, maybe a texture flat, you won't be able to change it. That's fine too. Let's maybe choose a texture that's going to work as maybe stucco or daub. So we'll use this uh, dirt texture right here. You notice that it's got some blotches on it. That'll work out great, but it brown isn't good. So let's desaturate it and let's make it bright. And this will give it this more stucco like color. Now, the one thing I'm noticing is, is that the walls are bright just like the stucco is and i feel like that doesn't work so what i'll end up doing is changing to have the wall be maybe a little bit darker so i'll bring the brightness down on here and that will make that pop out more now if i wanted to you could even have the wood be like right here like this if you want to have that extra floor that works fine maybe you want to stick it together you can kind of do it that way and you can create multiple floors you could copy and paste and then have another floor right here. So this would be like your second floor. And then just keep pasting as many floors as you want. We're gonna start with this simple building first. We're gonna do just this real simple Tudor building. Once we make this, and we'll make something a little bit more complex with lots of different uh, pop-outs and a lot of different things like that. But we're gonna start with the basics on making these real quick. So for now, we're gonna do one floor, okay? So we have that one floor, or just ground floor and there's nothing else. We'll start with that first. Now that you've kind of put that together, now you can start focusing on the roof. We're going to keep building up. We don't add doors, windows, or pop-outs until we've flushed out the main structure. You always start with the main shape first. If you want to have other sections that pop out from the main building, you add that later. But first start with the main structure. This will get your groups in the history and you can start favoriting them and that way you have the same walls and fill available in this section right here and recently used. In fact, I'm going to favorite this right now so that I have that available to me and that way if I want to add other sections, I totally can. All right. I think I am actually going to add another floor just for fun because I kind of feel like a second floor another floor would be nice. So, now the next step is to add some kind of roof right now you can use the shape tool you can use the line tool the same logic we used for this right here you can use the pen um, this is why you want to use the grid let me go ahead and move this down a little bit because i want to have some room and i just also want to mention that when you're making these start big first make them bigger don't start by making them tiny like this make them bigger first because it's easier for you to select things and edit them so you just make it a little bit bigger and then you can scale it down later so start big and then scale it down when you finish it that's super important all right so now let's talk about roofs now there are a lot of different types of roof shapes we've already got rectangles and sh squares as you can see here with these different floors we had but what we want to do is we want to figure out what kind of roof that we have now the more decorative the roof is the, probably the more wealthier the occupant is. Let's start with the basic type of roof, which is just a pitched open gable. Open gable means that the, the frame, the A-frame that we're going to have at the top is going to be open and it will just have wall. There's not going to be sh roofing shingles or thatch or whatever type of materials you're going to be using. So there are a couple ways to go about doing this. Let's use the pen and just try it out first. Make sure that you have the grid on and snap to grid. Now, when it comes to the pitch of the roof, it depends on the environment that you live in. The greater the pitch of the roof, that generally means there's more rainfall, and that pitch allows the rain to go off of the, the roof and make sure that it doesn't build up on the top and collapse it. So if you want to portray that if you maybe you live in a rainy area, then you might want to consider having a very high-pitched roof, kind of like this. Press Enter. Oopsie, I want to actually turn off the merge shape, by the way, and then click and turn that. And then I'll hide this by going back a layer. And then you have your roof piece right there. And you can see that there's not roofing 
in front of it, it's open gable, right? So now if I can show you what a not an open gable looks like, if we had a roof piece, and let's say that I wanted to um, use one of these pieces to make a roof piece like this, and I place one there, and I place another one here like this, this right here would not be an open gable, right? Because there's roof showing on the gable part. So this is open roof right here, and this is not an open gable. Now, open gable is the most basic of the roof designs that I that I see. You'll probably make a lot of those. You'll see a lot in fantasy um, architecture and stuff that there are these open gables. So a lot of different ways to kind of go about it. Let's go ahead and take a step back and just kind of take a look at the design. And in fact, we might want to change things up a little bit. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's scale this down and let's have the first floor be a little bit smaller like this. And this will kind of give it a more interesting shape. Let's bring this size down and let's have that first floor that's above the ground floor be bigger. This will make it a little bit more unique. It will add a little bit more dimension to it and it won't be exactly the same. So that works well right there. We can even scale that up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it even bigger. That way get some get some nice scale in here. Let's bring it down. There we go. This looks good. I think that looks nice. All right, there's your first structure. Okay, now one thing you might want to do to kind of denote like which section is further back and which one is closer, you can use a contrast, lightness and darkness to portray that. So what I'll do is I'll click this bottom one right here and I'll make the brightness on the stucco a little bit darker. And then I'll make the wood of the timber frame just a little bit darker as well. And that will give the, the sense that this section is smaller and further back than the top part. So using contrast to show depth is super important. Okay, if I maybe I, I do want to show some of the, uh, do you want to show maybe just a little bit of the wooden frame up here? Let's go up just a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to play with that. Okay. So now we have each floor section done and we have that put together. Now let's go ahead and just decorate the first section and then we'll add some pop outs. We're adding a roof. We're going to add in all the little details. So that's step one. I'm going to quickly save it real quick. I'm just going to call it side view buildings. And I make these quite often. So I'll be coming up with lots of more designs in the future. So if you guys need any inspiration, I can kind of help you out with that. Definitely come join our discord server. If you need any help, putting together or coming up with architectural designs we can kind of go over that together we have an incredible community great mentors so definitely go join our discord if you haven't already and kind of get the help that you need there all right i'm always willing to help and so are our mentors all right looks like it's just about to finish saving and then we can kind of work on to the next step and then we'll go into some more complex buildings as well so first step now when you're adding on the details just like before I built from the ground up. So we need to start with uh, the entrance and going up and any staircase will work just fine. So I'll just use one of these staircases right here. Let's use this one right here. You don't have to use the shape tool if you don't want to, that's up to you. I want it to match the same kind of material as the stone right here, as you would expect. You would expect a lot of the materials to be kind of the same because the whoever built this had to go to some rock quarry or find the stone to build the work or go to a mason and had to use a lot of the same material. So I'll desaturate this and I'll bring the brightness down so that it kind of matches a little bit. And I might even bring the contrast down because there's some darker pieces and I'll flip it like this to give it a sense of verticality with steps going up. Now you can put it in the dead center if you want. Maybe you want this, maybe you want it to be on the side right here. You could have the door there. It doesn't really matter. You could have the door be on the side of the building. That's up to you where you want. My suggestion about where you put the door on the side or on the front is if you have some kind of grand entrance. For instance, if you're making like a grand temple, then you're probably going to want the entrance to be in the center where you can kind of see this grand entrance with its statues and stuff. But you don't have to do that either. It's up to you. It's to decide whether you want to be the entrance to be on the front or the side. You have to make that decision for yourself. 
Okay, so now that we have the door, have that entrance that goes up to the door, we might want to have the door itself. And so we can create a door ourselves. It's not complex. What we'll do is we're going to use these same shapes right here. And I'm going to create a little door right here. We'll use this right here. We'll bring the stamp scale down. And I'm going to use the fill. I'm going to use black to kind of represent a door. And then what I might also do is use a circle brush to create an arch. Now, what I have here, you notice, is there's a lot of straight lines. And what would break up a lot of those 90 degree lines is some kind of curvature. Remember I mentioned the importance of basic shapes like a circle? Well, a half circle is, a, is an arch, and that works perfect to break up all these 90 degree angles. I see so many 90s and 180s, but what I don't see are any type of curves of any kind to kind of help us out. So we'll end up doing that. So I'll just go back. I'm going to go ahead and subtract and minus this a little bit, and then I'll take a circle and I'll just put it right in the center. Oopsie, I'm going to go to add, my mistake. I'm going to put it right here, and then you'll be able to, oopsie. My mistake. Let's actually scale up to make this because I'm noticing that the merge shape. Oh, I didn't even have it on. That makes sense. Okay. Let's go do it this way. Instead, I'm going to go like this. There we go. Perfect. And then now you can make the door itself using textures and I'll show you how to do that. But the most basic way to make a door or a window is this method of using black as the fill. So this is the basic method and you just scale it down. Remember what I said? Working with big first and then going small so first you would have your door here now you could if the door is open you want to have it so the players can just waltz right in and make the door like this if you don't like it that way you can copy and paste it over to here and then we can start making a door itself so we can pick a texture that we want let's choose wood i've noticed that i've got to uh resaturate it so we'll go ahead and go back to the fill options here we're going to saturate it and we'll bring the brightness down. There we go, like this. We might wanna create the bars that go across. So what we could do is just type in bars. Ooh, bar, my mistake. And you could just take these right here. Let's turn off the snap to grid and just kind of put these bars right here to kind of represent the crossbars. Let's go ahead and turn the shadow off and let's bring the, the saturation down. And now you have a little door right here. And you can also create a handle. So if you want, we can go to, let's see here, a nice little handle. I believe there is a light here. Um, let's see here, this one right here. This light right here might work well for a door handle. We'll just desaturate it, bring the brightness down. And I think I'm gonna change the width a little bit. There we go. And then there's your door handle right there. So if you prefer to have this door right here just group label it door and then put it right here and then there's your simple door right there okay you know what we use them for i mentioned this in the beginning of the stream is they work as a great guide on how to make your top down battle maps because it gets confusing on how to where to place the room how to do all the architecture these side view buildings give you a reference you can do the same thing. You don't have to use a side view building for a reference. Maybe you want to go into fantasy regional and then pick out some kind of building that you want to make. You can use that too, but the side view buildings work great as a reference for your top down battle maps. They also have other functions as well. You can use them for explorations purposes if you're using an interior. They also work. They're just fun to make if you want to make them for yourselves. But I do feel that there is a functionality as a DM, as a GM. I use them as a reference for my battle maps. I do this all the time. It just makes it easier than trying to figure out all the architecture myself. So that is the main function of that. Now, since I kind of have this door right here, why don't I just use it for a window, right? Kind of makes sense. You can uh, use the, again, just use um, this right here to kind of represent a window. You can put two side by side if you want like this, there's your kind of first step. Now, once you've put together the elements that you want on here, now you can start putting together the timber frame part. So I'll use the line tool for this. And what I'll do is I will start putting together some frame stuff. So what I'll do is I'll push down here like this. I wanna make sure that this goes down a layer. One thing I've noticed about these is that the fill is 
up a layer. So I want to go up into here and turn the offset down. Let's move it down to negative four. Okay. And then let's go ahead and change the stamp scale and let's push it down a layer. There we go. And now I can start putting together the beams that are going to go across like this. So maybe a good place to kind of put this would be right next to the door. We'll put some there. And that has some nice shape there. And then the next one is, is maybe want to throw in a, well, maybe some going across. So we could put one right here like this. Oopsie, not that one. This one right here like this. Oopsie, we'll make sure that goes down a layer. My mistake. There we go. All right, and then maybe we want to uh, put a bunch of smaller ones going down across like this. And this is not, these are not official Tudor style um, designs or patterns, but you can totally make your own, which is important. So we'll copy and paste, and we'll just put some ribs that kind of go across right here. And that will add an extra little piece of design to it that I think just gives it a little bit more character. We can copy and paste and put another one up here like this, or we can have it go all the way across like this. There we go. And now you kind of have some frame right there. So you see it's kind of coming together. And there's all different ways to put together the references because right now they're all going straight up or across. You can do diagonal designs as well. So let me give you an example. So if I want to do a diagonal design, I just go across like this. And then what I would do here is, is that I would make these a little bit smaller like this, and then just copy, paste, go across, and now you're kind of getting into these cross designs right here, copy, paste, like this. And now that's gonna give it some extra, it's gonna break up a lot of those 90 degree angles because now you have these nice diagonal designs and you don't have to do the same design. You can just put like a straight bar that goes right across like this. So be creative and be be creative about your Tudor style framing. You don't have to uh, make it exactly like um, the designs that the Tudors used, but you can use all kinds of different stuff. So maybe I want to go in here, copy and paste and couple, put a little bit more in here just to give it a little bit more design work. If you put one right here like this. And so you're starting to see like the concepts and you start to put it together. And so you have this nice building right here that's kind of coming together. And this is that first floor right here. So what I'll do is I'll just select it. I'm going to group it. And I'm going to call it the ground floor. Sorry, not first floor, ground floor. Create. There we go. I'm going to quickly save it. Yeah, they work great as references. Um, I Sometimes I just don't know the design that I want to make when I'm making like a tower or a, a temple or whatever it is. And so making the side view building with the volume and the depth and the verticality gives me an idea of like how, how I should go about putting together the battle map. And of course, this is more time, can, more work for you as a DM or a GM, but I can guarantee your players do appreciate the verticality, the side view, because they feel like they kind of don't know how tall or how much volume a building has when it's just purely top down. So again, these side view buildings are incredibly helpful to give your players a sense of depth, to give them a sense of verticality and a sense of volume that's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on the next floor. Some things that I'm noticing is that there should be maybe be some kind of supports um, for this part. So what we do is we might maybe create um, a little support right here. It goes down right here. Oops, I've noticed this is at layer negative five. We want to bring this down. There we go. We'll change the size of this here and then put this nice little piece right here. And that's going to act as our support for that next floor right there. So let's go ahead and put this on right here. Make sure the angle is right. There we go. Cool. Now we have some supports for that. That works out great. Okay. All right. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and keep going here. Now with this one, again, what we could do is instead of putting down um, the, the elements, like the windows and stuff first, let's put down the framework first. So to do this, maybe we want to pick like a design that we want to go with. Let's go with maybe cutting the building in half. Oops, I don't think it showed up. Let's try that again real quick. Go shift, press enter. There we go. We'll push it down a layer. There we go. We'll bring this thing up. Here you go. Okay. 
and now you have the building's been cut in half at the top. And so now you have some space, this negative space to kind of work with. Okay. And now you can go in, we can copy and paste. What's really beautiful about um, copying and pasting is you don't have to do all this extra work. We can just take these stamps right here, copy and paste, and just put them right in here if we need to. So what I try to do is not have perfect symmetry. Like here you have some windows right here and then windows on the other side. Break that up a little bit and put maybe one side that has windows and then something else can be on this side. Okay, and it also offsets because you've already have these two windows right here, and then you have these two windows on the left side and not the right side. See how odd it is if I actually put these windows right here on this side? It looks right dominant, right? And so to balance out the whole composition, I'll move these over to here, okay? All right, now that I put those in there, let's kind of add in the frame part that we were talking about. One great thing we can do is we can just take the design that we took right here, we can just take this whole design right here and just kind of take that if we need it. Just copy and paste and then just kind of put that right here if we want. We can do that. It's up to you. If you want less work for yourself, you can totally just copy and paste and put that there. That would give some continuity in the design because it has a lot of the similar elements there. That works out fine. I'm going to go ahead and select this and group it. And then I'll make place it down to make sure it's below. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to copy, paste, put another one right here. There we go. And I'm going to make some changes, actually, um, just so it's not the exact same design. I'll have these ones going vertically instead. This will make it different. So now I can copy and paste and put that there. And I can line up these windows with my X squares right there. Perfect. So... And you know what? Let's go ahead and add a larger window sill to it. If you're not sure a window sill is like the board beneath the or by the window. So I'll go ahead and place that one there. And to show that it's closer, I'll make it a little bit brighter. So I'll bring the brightness up on this. There we go. And I'll bring the scale down and I'm going to put them right underneath the windows to create this window sill. So one will go right there. Oh, it's a little too big. Make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Copy, paste. So now you have some nice window sills there. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm not going to do it to this one, actually. I'll have the window sills be up here and then down there. Those won't have it. So this will also kind of, again, make these kind of stick out, make them a bit different than the other ones. So that works out great. Let's continue just kind of adding more stuff. Let's keep adding more framework to it. Go across here, just keep going. There we go, we'll bring that scale up. Push it to here, okay. And then we'll go ahead and we're gonna create a different design for this one. So let's do a triangle design like this. So what we'll do is we're gonna go one here, one here, and one here like this. There we go. That will kind of create this nice triangle design. Let's push this up one layer. There we go. And then let's go ahead and put another one that goes just right down across like this. There we go. We'll bring the scale down a little bit. There we go. And then you can continue adding more if you want. Maybe you want to put another one that goes across like this and another one that goes across like this. You see, you can come up with all kinds of really, really interesting designs. Just make sure that you get the layering correct. There we go. Okay. So you're starting to see all the different kind of designs that you can kind of come up with when you put this together. Lots of different designs. If you don't like that, then you can put it over here on this side like this. See all different ways that you things that you can do. If you want to add more to it, then you can add another one right here. You see the, the possibilities really are quite limitless when you're putting together these Tudor style or these uh, these kind of buildings. Whenever you scale something up, see, I kind of made this a little too small, so I can just bring the scale down to adjust, and there you go. So you're starting to see the concept now as the design kind of comes together, and you have lots of different ways of putting together the architecture. I'm going to go ahead and maybe center these more. Notice that they're a little, little too far up. Let's just center them a little bit more, just like that. There you go. 
I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then we'll start working on the next part, which is going to be the gable part. We want to put some kind of design on the gable. And then we'll start adding some roof elements. Where are we at for time? 35? Ooh, I was hoping to make a couple more buildings, but this is taking some time. We can totally turn this into a series as well. If this is something that people find useful or they like this kind of stuff, then we can make this a whole series because there is so many different types of architecture, so many different types of buildings, so many different things that we could make. Right now, I guess in this stream, we're just going to be focusing more on kind of the half timber or Tudor style stuff. So we've saved it. Let's go ahead and continue um, adding more. Let's go ahead and just continue on this beam right here that goes all the way up like this. Press enter. I'm going to line that up to make sure that it lines up properly. There we go. And now you have a nice line right here that goes up to here. And then from there, you can start playing with the architecture. Let's go ahead and have it to where it goes up and then across. Oopsie. I wanted to use the uh, pen. Actually, my mistake. Go all the way up, go across, and then go down. Press enter. There we go. That one is done. Okay. So we're following a similar design to down here, but let's not make it the exact same design. Maybe we want to change it up. And I do want to make sure that I do label, I do kind of group this floor right here. Make sure that's all grouped. Okay. Oopsie. Let's unlock that. Is it all grouped together? I think so. Okay. Let's create group. Uh, first floor. Yeah, we're not going to have enough time to do too many, actually. We're just going to make this one, but we have a lot to do. Chimneys, roof, adding in the pop-outs, adding in um, some organics like vines on here. We have so much more to do. Okay, let's go ahead and just continue adding more stuff. Let's go ahead and create a little piece that's going to go right here. Copy, paste that, flip, flip it, push it over here. There we go. And then we'll also connect these right here to go across right here. Perfect. And then we'll add, we'll add a couple more right here like this. There we go. Nice little design that we got going on here. There we go. So you kind of get the overall idea. So that shape is coming together. Let's go ahead and take these and just lock these so I don't accidentally select them. I kind of noticed I was having that issue. Okay. Let's go ahead and throw in maybe one... Uh, window. Let me unlock this real quick. Let's just throw in one window. I think might be good up at the top there for the attic space. So I'll just copy and paste one. I'm just going to put it over here on this side. Now you noticed that I kind of offsetted them. So there's two on the ground floor on the right side, and then I put two on the the first floor on the left side, and then on the attic space where the the gable is I put another single door window up on the right side again and so in other words they are zigzagged when you kind of create a line connecting each one of them that is going to be important having all the windows on one side can look good one of the tricks to good architecture is is that it has an element of symmetry and asymmetry to break it up because you notice that this building is symmetrical in a sense of its design right there's no pop outs and stuff like that it's very symmetrical in its shape but each floor has elements that break up that symmetry, right? But with the windows, with the design of the half timber frame, all of those things. So a mix between symmetry and asymmetry is a way to make a very convincing and a very good design. Okay, so it looks like we've practically finished that roof element now. So we can just select it, create group. We're going to call this the gable. And you can also type in roof as well, so gable slash roof, because that's what it is. And then from here, we can start adding on some additional uh, details. We're going to add a pop out, but what I'm going to do first is create the roof elements. And the way that I do this is pretty simple. You can use a whole host of stamps that can act as roof elements. But remember, you're only seeing the roof from a side angle, so you're not going to see all these different shingles. You're not going to see all this stuff. And so what I will do is I'll just take one line, I'll put it down, and what I'm going to end up doing is just changing the color of it to make whatever color that I want for roof. Now, brown, white, and gray are all neutral colors, 
So whatever color you choose for the roof is going to be is going to work fine because everything on right now is neutral colors. If you wanted to change the stucco to a yellow color or a red color or a green color, then you're going to have to start thinking more carefully about what color your roof is, right? But for now, because it's all neutral colors, we'll just choose any color. What I'll do is I'll first boost the saturation and then I'll change the U. And you can change it to whatever color that you want. Okay, it doesn't really matter what color you choose. It could be blue, like this blue right here. We can bring the brightness down a little bit. We can boost the contrast. And then we can take this piece right here and just put it right here like this. And we're going to put it right on top. And we'll bring the scale down so it's not crazy. And then you're going to have this color of this roof that you want to use. Copy, paste, flip, and rotate it. Put it right here. And now you have your roofs right here whatever color that you want to have them and there's a lot of different ways to make roofs you can use stamps you can use the line tool whatever this is just the basic one let me show you let me let me show you how to maybe make a different type maybe you want to make thatch and thatch is like using hay so let me show you how i would go about doing that one so what i would do is you would go into stamps when you have your shape suggest selected in fact, we can use the line tool for this. Well, no, let me think here. Let's try the line tool at first and just see how that goes. And just type in grass. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to select both of these, copy, paste, and we'll make a couple variations of roofs. So here's one here, and then I'll go into the grass right here like this. Let's just zoom in and take a look at it. Okay, it looks like we need to change it to this yellowish color. I think about there looks good. And then let's also bring the scale up so it's nice and big. And then let's just place that right on top. And then here's kind of like your thatch roof. What one thing you can do is put them side by side like this to give it an extra sense of thickness. And then just kind of group that. And then just place this right there, right on top. And there's like your yellowish roof. And remember, any color works. You're kind of noticing that it doesn't matter what color the roofing is with these neutral colors. It works out fine, right? So that works out fine. And this works out fine. Whichever one you want to use. I personally kind of like the yellow. I think it kind of looks nice. So we'll go ahead and that. Now, once you've decided what color the roof is, now you should make sure that all most of the roof elements are this same type of roof. Because we've chosen thatch as the roof, what other types of roof, if we're going to throw a pop-out or a dormer or any of those things on there, we're going to want to also make sure that those are also made of thatch. Okay, that's important. Make sure there's a continuity in the types of roof elements that you're using, right? That only makes sense. We could... Mew Empires, we can totally make a side view boat. That would be awesome. Uh, I was planning on making one of those in the future too. So that's a great idea. Wild Sea is awesome. Okay. All right. So now that we've added in the roof elements, why don't we keep talking about what other roof elements to add? So let's say that I want to create a window that pops out from the roof. It's called a dormer. What happens if I want to make a dormer? You totally can. Check this out. We're going to go into the shape tool, we're going to choose that same roof, but we're also going to choose a fill. We're going to go choose a texture. We're going to choose this hay right here. I'll obviously have to make some adjustments here, but let's go ahead and just put down one just to see what it looks like, because you're going to notice there might be some differences. I'm kind of seeing that the saturation might have to go up a little bit more, and we might have to change the hue just a little bit as well to kind of make sure we get that right color yellow. And I think that looks perfect. Let's bring the scale down a little bit here and let's make a dormer. Now you're gonna to wanna to use shape and this, and you're gonna start, it has to come into contact with the roof. So if I wanna go across like this and go here and then press enter plus, and then there is your dormer right there. If you have this nice dormer, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we push it down a layer too. So what I'll end up doing is making sure this goes up a layer and I'm gonna push it up to the front. There we go. I had it in the back, but if you push it to the front, now you can see some of the frilly line work actually going uh, going towards in front of the wood. So that makes it look like the roof is tapering or hanging over the gable. 
before when I had it like this, you notice that it didn't look right because the gable cut it off, pushing it forward helps to fix that. Now, again, you want to show depth. You notice that the, the dormer color of the roof is the same color as the line that I made. We might, might want to make this just a little bit darker to show depth. Like if you wanted to have the dormer closest to you, you would make it around the same color as the roof. But if you wanted to show that the dormer was maybe 10, 20 feet further away, maybe in the center or far in the back on the roof, then you would change the brightness just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be much, just enough little bit of brightness there. We'll adjust the brightness on the line. And there you have that right there. So you have that perfect. So you can create these little windows right here if you want. If you want, you can have another one going across. We can just copy and paste it. And then you can just go right here and just flip. And there it is on that side. One thing I noticed is it did flip um, the line. So just go in there and just flip the line work. So it goes back on there. And then there it is right there so you can have it go across i don't want to have symmetry like that i think that looks weird so what i'll do is turn that off and just have one on this side and you'll notice that it corresponds with the with the offsets that i did with the windows because this is also a window okay this this shape right here if you were looking at it from the front would be the same pitch angle as the gable that's this triangle shape right here that i have for the gable it's that same shape but this is the side view of that window so and you notice it again that it tapers off. See, I have a window there, 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 and there. And then the door is right here. So everything is nicely balanced on the composition, giving it a nice sense of balance. It's put together nicely with that. So let's keep adding some more details to it because right now there's just not a lot going on with it. We have the basic structures. We put these things together. We might want to add some more details, like maybe adding a pop-out. How would I go about doing a pop-out? Super easy stuff. We can actually take one of these um, build parts right here and just kind of use it. Let's just, let's just take this, turn this off. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe change up the shapes here, turn this off. And then let's maybe use this as another floor. So what I'll end up doing is, is I'm going to select this whole thing and group it. This is going to be the main building. I call this the main shape. A pop out is like something like it could be like a room that pops out, a kitchen that pops out to the side. This is going to give it some extra sense of depth and it's not going to it's going to remove some of the symmetry that already exists in the, the design. So if I go ahead and select this, make sure it's at layer zero. And if I push this down like this, I have another shape right here. So if I wanted to have another part of the building, like right here, I could do that. But first, what we should do is continue on some of the foundation. So I'm just going to go in here, copy and paste that, put it down right here. I'm going to make it darker. Remember the trick to depth is, is showing contrast. So I'm going to make this darker and I'm going to put it right here like this. There's that shape. And I'm going to put this one right on top of this one right here like this like that. I'm going to keep some of that foundation. In fact, we can do it like this instead. So it looks like it pops out a little bit more. That looks kind of nice. And I'm going to want to change the brightness of both the walls and the shape itself. So I want to go ahead and bring the brightness down on this one. And let's bring it, let's make it really, really dark. And then let's also change the, the darkness on here as well. Okay. Now this should give it that extra sense of depth. Let's go ahead and just make sure this lines up properly. There we go. And I have this extra building right here. Perfect. Extra step. Now from here, you can, again, use that same concept with the roof that we did before, right? So we want to add maybe some kind of roof to this. So we'll just go ahead and use that same shape that we did right here. I'm going to use the pen. And I'm going to start here, here. I'm going to have it go over a little bit like this. Press enter. And then there is your shape. We might want to obviously flip like this, there we go. I'm gonna put it like this. And you're starting to see that the building is kind of coming together, right? You've added a lot of these different shapes by adding a little pop out and things are starting to come together, right? I mean, some things we might wanna add is we could add a window on here. We could add anything that we want on here. I've already feel like there's already a lot of windows. So maybe we just wanna take the simple design that we made right here 
like right here, I grouped these, copy and paste that group, and then just open up this one, V, and then just put it right on here. And then we can kind of continue on this shape. And in fact, I don't want to have the exact same shape. So what I'll end up doing is just changing it up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to copy paste, put that one right here, put that one right here. There we go. And the shapes are coming together, right? And let's maybe open up this right here. And what I'll end up doing is just putting maybe one window over on this side instead of two. So just one rando kind of window over here if we want. I think just one right there should be fine. There we go. Let me just check. Oh, I'm going to change the brightness on this. I think is okay. That should be good. Let me take a step back and look at it. We still need to add a couple more things. Where are we at for time? 50. <laughs> we have a couple more things uh, to make here. Let's go ahead and take a step back. I'm enjoying overall the design. Um, let's go ahead and add in the last bit of Tudor uh, design stuff in here. So let's go ahead and maybe create a line right here. It's going to go from here to here. We're going to have to mess with the size as always. There we go. And what I'll open up this one and push this one right here. So make sure that they're kind of lined up properly. Let's push this up a layer. There we go. Up a layer. There we go. Okay. All right. I think overall this design works okay. In fact, I think I might want to add maybe some of those X's. I know I took them out, but it wouldn't hurt to maybe throw them in there. Because if you can, always try to reuse a lot of elements that already exist. It's just, just going to give you a lot less work. And instead of the X's being on uh, the top, the bottom, I'll put them on the top this time. So I'll put them over here instead. There we go. Okay. All right. Design's coming together. I think that looks fine. Let's go ahead and make the chimney. And we can kind of just use the same kind of brick material that we used right here. But this time it probably wouldn't hurt to maybe adding a cap because chimneys do have like this chimney cap at the top. And so I'll go ahead and select this and then I'll go ahead and choose caps. And then I'll just move this to the side right here like this. And then you'll have a nice little chimney right here. You can add in some more elements like maybe um, using a pole to kind of create um, the stacks that kind of come out of it. So I don't recommend you use, if you are going to do that, don't use the side that has the face right here up at the top. You see that little circle part at the top. Make sure that it's not facing that way. It's facing down. And I'm going to push this all the way down. I'm going to desaturate it, turn the shadow off. There we go. We'll bring the brightness down. And then same thing with this one. I'll push this up a layer. And then I'm going to use this to kind of represent stacks and you can also taper them if you want they can be off from each other if you want to have it like that you can totally do that and so the shapes kind of coming together that also works fine you also want to what what always helps any stamp is shadows and stuff and so one thing i've kind of noticed is that we haven't used shadows to make things pop out so we're going to be covering how to do that here first let's go ahead and add in some greenery because vines are a great way to kind of add a organic element. One thing that makes maps pop out that look really nice is when you add some vegetation to it, right? You have the unnatural, which is which is like human-made or a species-made structure. And then the contrast of natural growing plants on top of that adds a nice contrast. So I'll just use the pen right here. I'll apply it real quick first to see just what it looks like. And I might have to push it onto the right layer. But you can go ahead and just add some of this stuff right here. And it will give this this nice kind of vegetation feel to it. We can put it across here. Sometimes it looks nice as well, like right here on a windowsill. You might have to change the stamp scale a little bit. Put some on a windowsill. Maybe we want to add some smaller ones right, right here. All of these elements kind of work to give it a little bit more, more flavor to it. Let's add some right here as well. There we go. If, you do, if you're not satisfied with this kind of element, you can use whatever you want. You Maybe you want to put some flowers on there, right? We could always put flowers in there. Uh, green and red 
uh, work really well together. So you can go ahead and just add in like a red flower. Remember to change the varying sizes. So have small ones, have big ones. Just adding in those extra details and make sure that you cluster some together, right? Have like two or three close together with varying sizes and then maybe just have one rando just kind of sticking out somewhere. Right, so you can go ahead and add that. Red and green work really well to their great colors, work well together. So we're just adding more and more elements to it. Light sources, I mentioned the light source. Why don't we add some kind of uh, light? Well, we, we can put like a torch maybe. Put a torch right here and just put it right here. It's attached to this frame right here. If you feel like it needs some kind of holder for it, you could always just take some wood pieces right here um, oh, right here it is right here and just put that just right there and that will kind of act as something for um, the torch to kind of stand on top of whatever and then you can go ahead and start adding your light sources in so you can just type in light uh, I've mentioned this in previous streams but tacking stacking light sources on top of each other is a great way to add extra effect so I'll take an orange light make it small and just put it right where the flame is and then I'll take another the more yellowish type and then put make it bigger and then put it on top of there like that and i'll maybe bring the opacity down just a little bit adding in a light source is a great way to give it a sense of verticality okay we're at 155 changes a lot of changes let's go ahead and add in the shadow stuff because the shadow work is going to be important like how is it that i show that that first floor right there pops out from the ground floor you're going to do that using shadows and there's a lot of different ways to do shadows now if you want to have everything grouped then i recommend you use the line or shape tool for shadows because if you use the top layer it's fixed wherever you paint that shadow it's going to be wherever it's going to stay put so when you use a line or a shape instead it's going to work better so i'll go ahead and choose a color i'm going to choose black you can use any color that you want for shadow I'm going to use the line and I'm going to go ahead and just go put a line that goes across right here like this. I'm going to put it up a layer. I want to bring the size way up like that. And I want to blur it. We're going to blur it quite a bit. There we go. And then I'm going to push this to make sure I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to go into this and add in this shadow. I'm going to make sure this goes up a layer so that that shadow right there is beneath there we go oopsie it's below that my mistake push this up one more layer oopsie that's the wrong one is it the right one let me just double check here yeah that's the right one just want to make sure that the shadow there we go it's underneath so you see that i use this little shadow right here and that immediately made this floor right here pop out more. I'm going to do that same technique. I want this section to pop out more. So I'm going to add a shadow right there. And you'll notice that that shadow also makes that pop out. So some nice tricks there using the line tool to create the shadows. And now those segments pop out, giving it that extra sense of depth, right? Remember, shadows are the trick to making it useful. Yeah, I also find it kind of useful to kind of make this stuff because now we have this design that right here and now I know exactly how to make my battle map because I know I'm going to have a main shape that's going to be rectangular with an A-frame and then I know there's going to be a pop out and it could be an L shape, it could be a T shape. You could have all this creativity to go with. Right now I'm kind of imagining I'm more of an L shape here with that main section right there going across and then going over you have that pop out right there so that works out really nice the extra kind of details that you can add or things um let's go ahead and make a i forgot the name of it already but we can make one little piece one more little piece that we can kind of play with here and then we're going to call it good because it's already 59. let's add one more roof element and what i'm going to do here is I'm going to choose a shape that I want. I'm going to snap to grid. I wish I could remember the name of that thing, but I can't seem to remember off the top of my head. Okay, let's change the scale here of the stamp. That's a little too big, you see. And then let's go ahead and use this one right here. 
to create our roof piece. Oopsie, let's turn snap to grid off. I'm noticing it's just kind of getting in the way. Enter plus, there we go. Oops, looks like I'll have to flip the texture. There we go. Put that right on top like that. Let me open up here and just grab a window real quick. And just put that right there like that. And let's go ahead and select this whole thing. Create group. Oopsie. That create group. And then one last little element to add right here. Or you can make it smaller and put it right on top of this dormer right here like that, or you could put it over here. Oopsie. You could put it on this side, by putting it down, putting it behind that and putting it right there. You could put it up here like this. You could put it right here. I think it looks kind of nice right there. I think the only issue is the window. And I think I know how to fix that window by just creating a circular window instead. So we're just going to make a little circular window like this, and we'll use, bring the stroke down, and then we're gonna use black for the color, and then just put that little window right there. That will also break up all those angles that we have. Cupola, thank you, Andorlian. I appreciate that. I always forget the name of those things. It is indeed a cupola, thank you. It's exactly what I was trying to think of, a cupola. And there's a lot of different ways that you can make a cupola too. So this is kind of one way. You could also create some vents if you want to go on top of that. Maybe you want to go, uh, there's a couple of ways that you can add a window up there. Let me go type in ship. I do believe there are some nice shapes. Like this one right here can work as like a vent. So you can kind of put that like right there and just bring the brightness down so that it kind of pops out. And you can maybe make that as a vent if you want for that cupola. Thank you. I love that word too, by the way. I love love cupolas but you guys are getting the general idea on how to put things together remember the trick is just to start with the basic shapes rectangles and squares start with that first build from the ground up build the foundation then build the ground floor then the first second third floor build the roof space whether it's an attic it's an open gable whether it's a pitched roof whether it's a circular roof remember those shapes to kind of help yourself out. Remember those basic shapes for putting things together. Once you've put all the volume together, you've added all the floors, then start decorating the main shape, right? By putting down the frames, putting down the windows, the doors, the frame art, maybe some vines, or maybe you want to put some stuff on there. Like you can put like a bird's nest on top of one of those dormers there. Add in the windows like the dormers. Add in your cupola, your chimney, you notice that there are all those things. So you start from the ground and then you build your way up. And so now we have this nice building right here that we can use to um, use as our guide for making our battle map. And this only took an hour to make this. It didn't take very long, about 50 minutes to make this. So they're pretty easy to make. An hour is going to add some time, but now you have some reference to work with because again, trying to come up with a good architectural design for your battle maps is work, right? Uh, it takes me time to figure out all the different elements, like what kind of shapes do I want? You start with basic shapes and just extrapolate from there. Start with the main structure and then build your pop-outs. This could have, this, this structure right here could be huge. We could add all kinds of stuff. I did want to make like something like a turret, but we just didn't have enough time. So I think we'll go ahead and do another stream uh, on how to make um, these, to how to make more of these things. We can even make a part two and continue adding more stuff to it and then making an interior as well. Again, the interiors are not functional as battle maps. They're mostly functional as for exploration tools. They're functional um, for maybe like some kind of one shot, but just not for combat. That's my recommendation. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been great. I really enjoyed this. I've been looking forward to this stream for a while. Um, we can go ahead and maybe make a part two for this, like I said just a moment ago, and then we can continue on this with making more and more complex designs. Maybe in the next one, we can make like a palace 
or a temple or a cathedral. I mean, there's so many different things that you can make with the side view. Um, it's just as many things as you can make with the top down orthographic, right? All right. Well, hey, thank you everyone so much. Um, please go join our Discord server. Uh, if you have questions about these kind of buildings, you can ping any kind of mentor or you can ping me. I am more than glad to kind of help you guys to kind of make, kind of get a grasp on architecture because I know that it can be kind of difficult putting together all the various elements, right? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Merry map making, and I will see you all on Friday. Avita Zane, everyone.